As I'm sure many of you are aware, there were reports that broke out on the dirt sheets and via social media on Thursday about with the WWE moving NXT off of the network and onto USA Network starting Wednesday, September 18th, that they were exploring, having discussions and considerations about bringing back Enzo and Big Cass. And surprisingly to me, I saw a lot of people crapping all over this. They don't need them, they don't want them, they suck, and skip de skip and whoop de woo and all of that crap. I can't, I guess, say I was totally surprised, but I was a little bit surprised because, oh, how quickly we forget. Now, surely, Enzo can't wrestle his way out of a paper bag, and you could just look at him, and besides the stories of other people have been telling about Enzo over the past couple of years via shoot interviews and so forth, and some of the dirt sheet stuff and reports that you've seen about him and backstage and how he acts and this and that, the accusations that were bullshit, all of this, you know, it, it's not hard to see why people be like, I don't want anything new with Enzo. And then looking at Big Cass, or reports about him being a big trumper and you know, being a big dude and not really seeming to have much other discernible qualities that you would sit there and say, that's going to be a future star, da, da, da. Again, I could kind of see it, especially when you look at NXT and largely the fan base that it caters to, that it possesses in terms of that circle jerky, um, high intensity, a nerd fest. That's exactly what the hell it is. The, oh my god, the flips and kicks are awesome and all the high spots that don't mean crap and all the no selling and lack of storytelling. Give me Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano in a 10 out of 25 falls, flaming anus barbed wire shards of glass in your whole ring, Viagra on a stick match. <laughs> if it happened in Japan, they Meltzer would give it eight fucking stars. Man, how soon do people forget? And that's what I'm here to do, is provide a little reality check. Now, ultimately, whether this happens or not is inconsequential to me in the grand scheme of this particular discussion. Excuse the hell out of me for just a second, but a reality check is exactly what the hell is needed. You look at Enzo with all the other drawbacks and flaws that I pointed out a moment ago. The perceived drawbacks and flaws of Big Cass that I pointed out a moment ago. Need I remind you that these guys as a tag team in NXT were massively, insanely over with that fan base, including the fan base that is raging and hormoning and pissing and bitching and moaning about them like petulant, emotional, preteen girls via social media. These guys were legit over with that fan base. They were legit over with that show. They were arguably the most entertaining act that you fucking had. So while their work rate was not supreme and their expanse of moves was limited and they didn't do all the high impact stuff, you know what they did instead of all that nerd crap? They got over! And then, oh, by the way, by the way, when they were promoted up to the main roster as a tag team, they did this crazy thing that is most certainly unbeknownst to the vast majority of these NXT heroes that actually graduate to the freaking main roster, their shtick got over there too! How easily people forget the shtick that they had at NXT got over, stayed over, and grew in the intensity of it being over for them to go on to the main roster and get over and stay over and grow how much they were over. And you wouldn't want that on freaking NXT when they're going on primetime cable television for two hours every Wednesday night competing straight up against AEW show? You've got to be kidding me! Are you insane? Are you nuts? Or are we that damn stupid? Stupid, stupid, stupid! 
You don't like Enzo because of this reason. You don't like Cass because of that reason. You don't like the concept of them being together to ruin your fucking indie circle jerk. Well, ding dong, dumb dicks, here's a news flash. The type of crap that so many of you fall head over heels backwards for trying to sit there and give reach arounds to, that crap doesn't work on a larger scale, period. It is scientifically proven. And how do we know? Because here are the facts, especially in a WWE context. If it did work, and it did really make an impact, you wouldn't see the continually decreasing live event attendance and television ratings that Raw and SmackDown have. Bam! That's it! There's your scientific, empirical, straight-up Uranus evidence! Characters, personalities, storylines, storytelling, infinitely more important than the stupid moves that somebody does during a match. And it feels like after the damn how many years, almost nine years of doing this crap, I still feel like it's Groundhog Day. I keep having to repeat these same points over and over and over and over again. What you need are stars, or at the least, I'm not saying Enzo and Cass were big stars, but by God, in the context of modern WWE, they actually got over. Why in the hell would you hate on an act that unlike most of your freaking heroes from NXT, actually got over and stayed over on the damn main roster. Like, what the hell sense does this make? I, I don't get it. You'd rather sit there and focus on Robert Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. Like, what the hell are they going to do to move the needle? And it's not just those two. You got so many other guys. Same damn thing. What the hell is the difference? You got Enzo coming out with his whack-ass certified G type of shtick looking like fucking Chester the Cheetah's retarded half-sister. And you know what he had? Personality. Charisma. A shtick. He could talk. He could be all those things that 95% of damn professional wrestlers can't be in the day. And Enzo couldn't work his way out of a fucking paper bag. And yet he got over. And he got over big with the smaller NXT audience, and then the larger Raw audience. And you wouldn't want that? If anything, you should think you would want to bring Enzo in to teach these other people in NXT how the hell to actually get over in a meaningful way. But leave it to the idiots, the hardcore fans, the neckbeards, the nerds, the reach-around Meltzer circle jerkers of the professional wrestling game today. To sit there and say that they don't want anything to do with these guys. Freaking big cast with no real discernible qualities other than his size. Now, you couldn't exactly say he was fire on the microphone for any length or consistency. You couldn't exactly say his personality was overwhelming. It wasn't overpowering. But you know what? He played well off of Enzo. Enzo played off of Cass. They were a good team and it freaking worked! If I'm going to put NXT on primetime network television for two hours every Wednesday night, you know what I want? I want stars, or at least if nothing else, I want guys that can actually be over. A little less Adam Cole, and a little more Enzo and Cass. Yeah, I freaking said it. Because you really think Adam Cole is going to go up to the main roster at some point and be just as massively over as he is with NXT? Ah, and you know what I've got? I've got a long, long track record of history that indicates that this is the case. And you know eventually, don't be stupid and naive about this, you know eventually Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are going to be incredibly involved with what goes on in NXT. If you think Vince is going to attach his name to a show that's going to air on USA Network for two hours in primetime every Wednesday night, and he's not going to have ultimate final say-so at some point. He's not going to sit there and try and put his imprints all over it, and Kevin Dunn isn't going to sit there in the gorilla position and what's up, Doc, all over the damn show. You're nuts! So why not actually bring in talent that is a proven enough commodity that Vince and Kevin Dunn can trust a little bit because they actually know what the hell they're doing, and they can actually entertain the damn audience! They can actually get reactions. This shouldn't be rocket science. This is professional wrestling. Get over and make money is the freaking name of the game. Not sit 
sitting there and doing 720 splashes into freaking Meltzer drivers and all this other garbage. Only the wrestling fans of today would gripe about a company bringing back a, a group, bringing back a tag team in this case, that got over on two different levels. Stupid, stupid, stupid. The stuff like this, I remind you just how stupid everything involving professional wrestling is now. This is dumb. If you don't like the thought of Enzo and Big Cass coming back as a tag team and being on NXT, then that's your own problem. That's your issue. Because if you're in the position of a Vince, why would you not bring these guys back? How could you not bring these guys back? You'd be insane not to. And frankly, the reality is, deep down, a lot of the fans that are complaining about them would ultimately still be happy to see them back. And it's crap like this that serves yet again as a reminder as to why the Schleg Daddy might be an angry wrestling man, but damn it all, OTRS Central is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.